Hello and welcome back to Badminton Insight. If you're new here, we're Greg and Jenny, two professional badminton players releasing a new video every Sunday on all things badminton. Now the backhand drive is one of those shots that if you hit it right, it feels so good. So in today's video, we're gonna teach you this shot, including how to perfect your timing, increase your power, and we'll also give you some great exercises of how you can practice it at the end of the video. So let's get to it. So let's start by looking at the footwork and more specifically, this final step, as this is actually really important for the backhand drive. So firstly, the timing of this final step is critical. You ideally want to land slightly after you strike the shuttle, so you're in control and you're able to use this extra force from your step to add more power into the drive. Secondly, you ideally always want to step forwards into the drive. And this is for a similar reason, to increase the force going into the shot. If you step sideways or even backwards into the drive, then you can't use your body weight and momentum as much. And of course, there'll be times when this footwork just isn't possible. Maybe you're not in a good enough starting position or the shuttle's coming at you too quick. But we're talking about the perfect drive here and we'll get onto when you should play this shot in just a second. Okay, so now you've understood the movement and timing, let's move on to what to do with your body and racket. So for the backhand drive, you need to be in a loose backhand grip with the thumb on this wider part of the grip here and this is really important as you use the thumb to generate power in the shot. Just look how little power I can get without using my thumb. As opposed to... A key point in your preparation is to have your racket quite high up in your starting position. A lot of people we see start with their racket there, which means they need to waste the time bringing it up to there to even start the movement. So if you're there, then you can go just from there to there, taking it a lot earlier and playing a lot more effective shots. So as the shuttle is approaching you, you want to bring your arm back a little bit like this, but not too much as we'll go on to mention. And then you use the muscles in the back of your shoulder, then forearm and wrist come through and you punch the shuttle. At the point of contact, you want to squeeze your fingers and thumb to create extra power in the shot. But you want to stay nice and relaxed up until this point because if you're really stiff and tense, it'll limit your power. It's like boxing. At the point of contact, you don't want to have a completely straight arm because you'll have lost a lot of power. But you also don't want to be completely tucked in like this. The optimal point is to have a slight bend in your arm like this. Oh. Now we're back from the hospital. It's important to mention that a big backswing doesn't necessarily equal a more powerful drive. It's all about the timing of your movement and contact point. In fact, a big backswing is often more detrimental to your shot. There's a higher chance of you mistiming the drive as you're less in control of your racket. And you'll also likely have a big follow through so you're less ready for the next shot. Well, that's the shot, but where should you actually hit this backhand drive to? Well, similar to smashes, good places to hit the shot are straight down the tram lines, to the middle to create indecision or set your partner up for the rotation, or cross court, which can feel amazing if you time it right but this is a bit of a risky shot if you don't. Now the benefits of hitting a backhand drive with slightly less power, but hitting it to exactly where you want to, massively outweigh the benefits of hitting a 100% drive with no control over where the shot's going. For example, as you can see here, I'm hitting a drive of 80% power, but ensuring it's going flat over the net. And also, I can put Jenny into awkward positions. However, as you can see in this example, I'm hitting with 100% power, but as I have less control, my shot has gone slightly upwards and onto Jenny's racket, and I'm put straight onto the back foot and under pressure. Obviously hitting with 100% power and control is ideal, but this can often be hard to do. And there'll also be some situations where you don't want to hit 100% power drive, such as when you're taking the shuttle below the height of the net. This is a common mistake we see people make because the shuttle travels upwards and not flat and makes it really easy for their opponents. Okay, so now you know how to hit the drive, and where to hit the drive, but how should you actually practice it? Well, we have four simple practices for you. The first exercise is hitting multiple shuttles like this, alternating sets with a heavy racket and normal racket. The reason we use a heavy racket is to increase our forearm, wrist and finger power, which is very important in this shot. We'd recommend doing one set of 16 shuttles with a heavy racket, and then one set with your normal racket, and then switching over with your partner. This is a great practice to focus on the movement timing and raw power of the shot. The second practice is simply driving back and forth with your partner. Again, you can alternate your sets between a heavy and normal racket, and we'd recommend doing this for around 90 seconds for each set. 
And if you don't have a partner but still want to practice your drives, then our third practice is wall hitting. Aim slightly higher up the wall to get into this drive position and focus more on your power than the movement at first and then try to make it a little more realistic by introducing a bit of movement. The final exercise to make it more match realistic is doing a two shot combination. For example, you can do a smash then backhand drive. Or a forehand drive to a backhand drive and hitting back to the feeder helps you understand the time that you would have in a match and make the necessary adjustments in your movement. And of course, you can always be practicing your backhand drive in open routines, like rear mid, which we've done on previous videos, or even in a match. It's just a lot harder to refine the skills and technique this way. So that's it. Let us know in the comments below what you maybe didn't know about the backhand drive before this video, or what you're most looking forward to putting into practice. And don't forget to share the video with that friend who you think needs to improve their backhand drive. Yeah, and as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like smash the subscribe button if you haven't already and we'll see you on another video maybe one of the ones we're about to show now